This video is about the texture bombing functions in Unreal Engine materials. I'm gonna explain what they are, what they're used for, and how we can use them to hide texture repetition. So let's do it. You can download the project file of this video on my Patreon. The link is in the description. Texture bombing nodes. Right click in the material graph and search for texture bombing. Two results will pop up. They're the same, but this one has parallax occlusion mapping built into it. That's what POM stands for. Let's add both of them. They're both functions, so we can double click on them to see how they work. The inputs are the same except that the POM one has an extra input for height ratio. We'll go over it later in the video. They both have one output and if we select them, we can add a description to them from here. We can also right click on them and add the description from here. So what do they do? If I hover the mouse on top of the nodes, the tooltip on both of them says that texture bombing uses multiple offset texture samples to break up tiling artifacts, so they can be used to remove texture repetition. And they do it by offsetting and rotating the same texture on itself and then blending them together. Let's go over the inputs, but to better explain them, we should use the function. So let's go over an example. Texture bombing. We've got these two planes with the same material. The texture repetition on them is clearly visible. Let's duplicate the material by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D, save it and open it. As you can see, it's just the texture with texture coordinates tiling set to 10. So let's delete this node and hold Alt and click to disconnect this one. Add the texture bombing function. connected to the base color and let's go over the inputs. Texture object receives the input texture, the texture that we want to apply the function to. Texture sample is not compatible with it. So we should either right click search for texture object and add it or right click on the texture sample and convert it into a texture object. Let's connect it and save the material. Right click create a material instance and assign it to the other plane. Now we can see that the repetition is gone. The UV's input is by default using a texture coordinate node, so we don't need to mess with that. But if we want to use the work position node to project the texture, we can add it and connect the XY output to here. Or if you're using an earlier version of the engine, mask two of its channels, R and G in this case, and connect it to here. Let's delete it and continue. Tiling controls well the tiling of the texture. Let's right click on it and promote it to a parameter. Let's set the default value to 10, save the material. And now from the material instance, we can see how it works. So let's set it to 10 and continue. Offset is the strength of random offsets. It's what removes the repetition. Right click and promote it to a parameter. In this case, the default value is 1. So set it and save the material. And let's see how it works. If I set it to 0, the repetition returns. And if I set it to 1 and continue to change it, we can see how it works. We can see that different parts of the material move in different directions. That's how offset removes the repetition. Let's set it back to 1 and continue. Optional height map, contrast and enable height lerp are connected to each other. To use the height lerp and contrast, we should first enable height lerp from down here. So let's promote all of them to parameters. For the optional height map, I'll use the Perlin noise from the starter content. So in the details, search for Perlin and add it. 
the default value of contrast is 0 and let's keep the default value of the height layer to false. Save the material and in the material instance, let's enable height layer to see what happens. We can see that the blurred areas where the different sections of the texture overlap become more clear. We can see it better when tweaking the offset value. Contrast controls the contrast of the height map. If we enable it and start increasing it, we can better see how it affects the transition areas. Is normal map is by default set to false. Right click, search for a static pool and add it. Connect it to the input and whenever you use a normal texture, make sure to enable it. Because of the randomly flipping directions that this function creates, normal maps need some extra instructions to work correctly. So always make sure that it's set to true for normal textures. Now let's go over the texture bombing with POM function. But before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join our communities on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. And if you're interested in downloading the project file of the videos, accessing more assets and in a way supporting the channel, check out my Patreon. The links are in the description. Texture Bombing POM Let's duplicate the material, create a material instance and assign it to this plane. Now open both of them. In this material, let's change the function to the texture bombing with POM function. So select the function and from here change it to the texture bombing with POM function. All the previous parameters worked the same. There's only one new input, height ratio. We'll go over parallax occlusion mapping in a later video. Basically, it uses the height map and adds an illusion of depth to the material. Height ratio controls how deep that illusion is. Let's promote it to a parameter and save the material. The default value of height ratio is zero, which means there's no depth. But as I start to increase it, we can see how it works. A value between 0.0.5 and 0.1 works just fine most of the time. Let's set it to a high value like 0.5. I want to show how the height map texture affects it. So let's enable the optional height map from here and let's set it to this noise texture. Now we can see the difference it makes. In most of the cases, if we use the height map texture of the material we're using, we'll get a better result. Considerations Let's go over some things to consider when using these functions. It can create some washed out areas. Using height map and contrast, we can better manage them. It works great with organic textures like grass, dirt, or rocks, but not so good with textures that have patterns like wood boards or bricks. There are a couple of parameters that are added to our material instance from within the texture bombing function. Cosine blend is a custom node and controls the transition phase of the height layer. T controls how we divide the mesh to create the variation. If we check the material function, we can see that the R and the G channels are masked. So we can only use these two to manipulate the divisions in the X and Y axis. The R channel moves it in the X axis and the G channel moves it in the Y axis. A parameter appears to select the height map channel of the texture. It's especially useful if you want to use a mask texture like this one from Mega Scans. To use it with landscape materials, we should change some of the settings of the function or we'll run into some issues. Because it's an engine function, we don't want to change it. So browse it and let's select all of these texture bombing functions, press Ctrl C to copy them and let's create a folder for the functions and press Ctrl V to paste them here. Open it and select all the texture sample nodes. In the details tab, set the sampler source 
to shared wrap. Now do it for the other ones too. Make sure to save all the functions. So these two are texture bombing functions and these two are texture bombing single sample functions. Within these two we should change the single sample functions to the ones we just edited. So in the texture bombing function select all the texture bombing single samples and replace them with this one and within the POM one again select the single sample and replace them with this one now we can safely use them with landscape materials if we don't do this we'll run out of samplers without any warnings and the landscape material will stop compiling this material function can make our material very heavy especially when used with landscape materials that have several layers the POM one is even heavier on the top left click on lit and under optimization view modes select shader complexity this is the regular one this is using the texture bombing function and this is using the texture bombing with POM function we can see that the ones using texture bombing are much more complex and the one using the POM function is even heavier there's another method to remove texture repetition called texture cell bombing which is less complex you can see the difference here the next video is going to be about cell bombing i'll put it up here as soon as i upload it so click here for more unreal stuff and thank you so much for watching also a special thanks to my patrons for making this possible like this video subscribe and join our communities if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below so See you in the next one.